talk a little bit about the beginning stages of your band and kind of what that looked like and who was a part of it. I had I had a metal band and we we did some touring and whatnot and so we broke up and I decided I wanted to do like my version of pop rock and so I'm like okay I'm gonna go out and recruit some guys and just jam and so I guess I texted you while you were taking a bath and you had your phone in your hand which makes it even weirder am I right? Yeah. (laughs) So how long ago was this? It had to have been 2011. Yeah, early so, 2011. Like early 2011. So it's like, hey, man. And he's like, well, I'm taking a bath right now, but I'll, yeah, let's do this. <laughs> and, and so that's really how it happened. Um, and then I just kind of got friends together. And we started like jamming and playing and just making what became those early songs. So it was you two that started it? Yeah, he's an OG, the original. Yeah. The, the name Fathom Blue. Um, is there something very significant about that? Does that mean something? Or So when we were trying to name the band, we were going through lists of like 40 and 50 names at a time. You remember this? So you'd had five guys who were texting 40 and 50 name suggestions at a time, all of them getting rejected. Not one of them, not even like, oh, we kind of like it. And then I threw out Fathom Blue and it was unanimous. Everyone texts back, I love it, that's it. Now, fast forward, and I still don't even really like the name. <laughs> we, we just were talking about that. But um, so when I was 16 years old, I had a stepdad. He was an addict. And uh, so I had a car I was redoing at a French shop. And so it was just this crappy, like, 1989 Cavalier. Yeah. And so I was going to the junkyard and getting all these, like, Z28 parts. And I was going to ma- basically make this car look awesome. And so it, I had it all the way down to primer. It was getting ready to be painted. I had the whole thing flipped. It was awesome. And the paint color I chose was actually the color Fathom Blue. And I chose it because it was like late 60s GTO, like muscle car color. So I thought it was going to be hilarious to have this like flipped 89 Cavalier that had this like muscle car paint job. Because yeah. this was Hammond, Indiana, which is like the hood. And my <laughs> friend had this car shop and we were going to like just do this up. Yeah. 
So anyways, uh, I went to go work that night with a buddy of mine. We were teenagers and I got home from work and my mom's like, Hey, are you sitting down? You know? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, um, I have something to tell you. Your stepdad sold your car. And so, um, he was just, he would go on these two to three day binges or whatever, and stuff would just go missing. He'd sell stuff or whatever. So he literally sold my car. So the only thing I had left was a can of fathom blue paint. And so when I got to college, I actually painted my dorm room walls with it. So it was like kind of my like punk rock little stance I was taking. So that's like the only reason why I even knew what the paint color was. And uh, so when I threw that out there, all the guys liked it. And we just we we, like instantly chose it. And then now it's the bane of our existence (laughs) because because no one ever gets it right. It's like we're phantom blues. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> everywhere we play phantom blues um what 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 other ones do they say it's um phantom. yeah phantom is like not even an english word <laughs> did they did they hear me <laughs> fathom is not even like an english word yeah like once you get it you get it but then when i went to latin america two summers ago and played down there and i realized that no one in latin america can say a th blend so everywhere i went it was like fathom blue fathom blue fathom blue you know and i'm just like yeah. so we have a name that like no one in america understands and then no one in latin america can physically say so it's like the word like kiss why can't we have a name like kiss <laughs> or something easy so so the meaning is really cool and the story is cool, but the actual like name sucks. Leaps Supply has been family owned and operated for over 60 years. Since then, Leaps has expanded to eight locations throughout Indiana, Illinois, and Michigan to better serve you. For kitchen cabinets, new water heaters, and advice from their experienced counter staff, Leaps Supply can help. The website is leeps.com. That's leaps.com to find out how Leaps Supply can be there for your next project. Hey, I'm Rocky. Hey, I'm Mike. And I'm Christian. We're Fathom Blue on On the the rise. Rise. She loves like she's lost She lost a lot along the way Tongue tied and twisted Just away with sunshine to prove we're more.
in the music scene, you hear a lot about uh, imagery in music and, you know, people leaving a show and, and being able to have a message, I guess, conveyed to them. Is there a certain imagery that you guys believe that there's a, a certain message or image that people get throughout the songs, whether they're telling a story or if it's just, you know, do you, do you think do you have songs that are about your wives or girlfriends or, you know, whatever's just going on in your life? Uh, obviously there's a lot of intentional lyrics to everything that, you know, we do. It's all life experiences. It's all things that we've actually been through, but what Mike's really good at is he likes to leave some, I guess, room for imagination or room for interpretation because we like to hit as many people as we really can. And the only way you can do that is if you relate to everybody that you really can. Yeah. So I, I mean, wouldn't you agree that, our, so our do, lyrics do you think are intentional. That you, you ask more questions than you do telling people what to believe or what to think. I think I was really confused when I wrote a lot of this material. Like I was confused straight up. Like my dad had died recently and I was going through a lot of crazy stuff. Like my relationship was totally on the rocks. Like I basically imploded my whole life and then started Fathom Blue. So like the music is really good because I think real rock and roll is made in, in the tension. You know, it's made in the dissonance. So like that's why I think it was like really emotional stuff because I was super emotional. But yeah, I think Christian totally hit it on the head and answered it better than I could. Um, I try to be ambiguous so it's like think about it like chew on it like we have a lot of people tell us like yeah the first time I heard your record it was alright but then I listened to it and like the fifth time I thought it was awesome and then the, it, like I don't think it's just one of those things you listen to and it, it's not your typical pop you know it's not like a Taylor Swift album where like you know exactly what she's talking about it's kind of like there's a little bit of am ambiguity you know and the other thing too is like um, Rocky, he's a real big like music buff. So he was like telling me, you write a lot of, a lot in minor tonalities and you do this and that and help me understand what I actually do because I'm more like, I just do it. And um, so I think there is like a, there's dark overtones, but then there's like this little hint of hope. And I think that most people feel that way in life. If there's people watching this that are musicians or in a band, is there one thing, one word of advice that you would give to them uh, through the stuff that you guys have been through and are seeing and have seen. Is there anything, if you could sit down with a group of young guys who are 15 years old, you know, having fun in a band, is it, what, what would you tell them? <laughs> Use a click. <laughs> <laughs> Metronome all the way. <laughs> yeah, and basically what that just means is I found out that you know, I was always like just, you know, I've always just been a rock and roll drummer till still to this day. I'm not yeah. like this crazy flamboyant skilled drummer, but I rock, you know, but I found that when I had a click in my ear, it was like the foundation was there and I didn't have to worry about it anymore. So I could like be creative with, freedom. I could decorate the house, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, that's like where it, I became a little bit more flamboyant, I guess you could say, um, and that's kind of like what Mike has taught me throughout this whole process is if you discipline yourself and you build that foundation, you build that metronome in your band that you can create so much more. Yeah. Yeah. I would tell young bands, um, don't get don't believe everything that you hear. I, there's so many crazy things that I thought like you hear from some other band about like well, how you're going to make it, how you're going to be big and all that. And I would say like read a book. Like if you're in a band and you're 15 and 16 years old and you're like, I hate to read, <laughs> like you're, you're, you're going to fail. So yeah. just do music for fun. Yeah. You know, but like if you're in a serious band and you're 15, 16 years old, like read every single book, like, and even as a band, these guys like kind of laugh at me, but I feed them with books and materials all the time. Like I have a printout of how to mix like waiting at home to give these guys. They don't even know I printed this week. <laughs> so it's like, I, we're reading the book together. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a book club, but, um, <laughs> six steps to songwriting success by Jason Bloom, who wrote all of the 90 era pop hits yeah. for like in sync and all them. And so we're like, Literally, I'm like, guys, go on your phone, download this book, you know? So it's like, uh, that would be my, so number one, get on the click. And then number two, read a book. <laughs> yeah. Mike's always giving us like homework and he wants us to write essays and, you know, <laughs> use 10 vocabulary words and, you know, he's going to read it at the end. No, but I totally agree. Like if you're going to get into this and my advice would be for the solo artist, 
it would be what Mike said, you know, really learn your craft. And with Christian, I had no idea about practicing with a metronome or having that bass until I started recording myself. Yeah. You know, when you really have to get on that, that grid, you know, be perfect on it, you really find out how bad you suck when yeah. you can't really go with the metronome. Yeah. But also for, for me, it was always passion. You have to be passionate to what you want to do. When you're passionate about it, you're able to get out your feelings. So you have to be true to yourself so that when you play your music, whether you have lyrics or you're just playing like melody, that you're able to tell your story through these notes or these words or yeah. stuff like that. So that would be mine. Promise 